All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Raising the Bar. And today is a special episode because I've met this guy online. His name's Patrick Black. He's also doing a podcast, which is about having honest conversations, trying to uncover the truth uh, in, in, in the most brave way possible. And despite all the name calling and, uh, you know, uh, things that are hurled at us by our friends and family and other people in society. So, uh, Patrick, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks so much for having me. Um, now, I, I noticed your work because I actually sort of um, drew a lot of parallels with the stuff that I'm trying to do and the guests mm-hmm. you had on. And, and also, I found you uh, specifically because you did this amazing, um, you put together like a little documentary on what's known as the Sabatian Frankists. And I thought this was really interesting because Joy Mike going down the rabbit hole as well and really, really kind of trying to, you know, find out that, as you say, the base level of truth. Mm-hmm. That was the kind of the, the route for me as well. That's what I found it to be. And certainly I'm not like the foremost expert on this, you know, definitely talk to David Icke if you Mm. really want the, you know, the base level on that. But, you know, I've done a fair amount of research and um, it's it's a convoluted uh, topic because there are so many uh, interwoven and intertwining parts to like who is the 1% and who is actually running things. It's a lot of different groups, but with uh, all having sort of the same goal um, is what I've come to understand. And so even with the Sabbatean Frankists, you know, it didn't start there. They were kind of an offshoot of, of other groups before them. I mean, this goes into ancient, ancient times, but the Sabbatean Frankists are Uh, important to mention because I think they're really like the um, the iteration that uh, you know kind of the where we're like uh, modern day Satanism kind of came from um, or at least a good part of it so um, so it's just just as a note you know you can definitely go back (laughs) further Mm -hmm. than these guys and and kind of find out a lot more but the Sabbatean Frankist was, uh, so it, it started with a, with a guy named Sabbatai Zevi, who um, he came out in uh, you know, 1666. Uh, and there was, you know, the Kabbalah was very uh, important to them. Uh, there was, you know, it was a my- mystical text, gave a lot of importance to, uh, n- you know, the power of numbers and how they're related to dates and all that. And in the, the um, Lurianic version of the Kabbalah, uh, they said, you know, on the 18th uh, day of the sixth month in 1666, there will be a, a Messiah. And lo and behold, this, this guy, Sabbatai Zevi, showed up, this, this uh, Jewish mystic uh, who proclaimed himself to be that Messiah. And, uh, and he amassed, you know, an amazing following of uh, a, million, a million Jews, uh, half, probably half the uh, Jewish population at that time. And um, so he had a very interesting doctrine. And that was um, that redemption was available through sin, uh, which is, of course, you know, the the opposite, the inversion of what most people would, you know, believe in their religion. Um, But their their uh, idea was that, you know, if you consumed all of the evil in the world, then you would be left with only good, essentially. Um, so they practiced the most, you know, uh, depraved, uh, sinful, uh, you know, things that they could they could do, which was uh, child sacrifice, uh, you know, drinking blood and all that, and um, you know, um, sexual orgies, sleeping with their siblings, and uh, you know, sleeping with your neighbor's wife. Just, you know, all, all manner of, of fuckery. <laughs> I hope I can swear on here. Yeah, of course Sorry. you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, all manner of fuckery. So, um, so he amassed following. And then, uh, you know, their kind of messed up behavior uh, was noticed by the, um, the sultan at the time, who gave Sabatai Zevi uh, an ultimatum essentially. And he said, well, um, you got to stop this crap. Um, I, you know, I'll either kill you or you can convert to, um, to Islam. So he was like, well, yeah, I'm, I'll convert to Islam. Uh, and 
So a lot of Sabatai's followers, you know, thought that was kind of an act of cowardice, but this became uh, part of their doctrine where, uh, you know, his plan was to infiltrate essentially re various religions in the world and, you know, pr to take on that identity while really believing in the Sabbatean doctrine, their redemption through sin. And, you know, their, their thing was to never divulge that to anybody to live in secret while, you know, accomplish their goals, but take on this persona of, you know, uh, Judaism or Catholicism, you know, and they, they spread out to every major religion in the world. And so 50 years later, uh, enter uh, Jacob Frank, who proclaimed himself to be um, the reincarnation of Sabbatai Zevi. And, um, you know, and the biblical patriarch Jacob, I'm not sure how that <laughs> intertwines, but um, yeah, he was the reincarnation and he, so he continued uh, Sabbatai Zevi's Sabbatean doctrine, you know, and it was even worse than, than you can imagine, you know, same kind of human child sacrifice, uh, you know, blood rituals, uh, sexual depravity, you know, the whole, the whole deal. And um, so he eventually met up with a man named uh, Adam Weishaup, uh, who was, uh, he's known for starting the Bavarian Illuminati. And, uh, you know, even the Bavarian Illuminati, I, I don't believe was the first iteration of the Illuminati. I think he got uh, the idea from the Spanish uh, uh, Alumbrados, which was a Spanish sect essentially the same the same thing but the Bavarian you know they they're more well known now um so anyway he linked up with Adam Weishaup who was a uh, a Jesuit um and again the Jesuits were another order they're essentially like a, a military order uh you know pretending to be you know for for Jesus a society of Jesus um but if you look I mean if you look at their oath you'll you'll see that they have very much like the same doctrine to pretty much achieve their goals regardless of morality regardless of what is right you know they they work for the pope uh and um and that's that and they will destroy anybody in their path so he was already kind of linked up with you know the whole jesuit order thing and then and again you know that goes back to like knights of templar and the the rosicrucians and you know all these kind of ancient groups um that eventually morphed into this so um so he met up with adam weishaupt and uh so he he had his little his little group of of jesuits and he and um you know, he was uh, also linked up with uh, the Rothschilds, who had a tremendous amount of money. So they sort of essentially combined the Sabbatean Frankist doctrine with uh, th this this Illuminati and um, and, you know, ba backed up by Rothschild money. They decided to infiltrate uh, another secret society, the Freemasons. So they basically tried to you know infiltrate all the masonic lodges around the world and um and so you know just like they spread throughout religion they spread throughout you know the masons and they were they're pretty much everywhere you know all the big institutions and you know that the whole deal with those groups especially the masons is you know they they help each other out they get into positions of power i mean i think most people know this you know a lot of masons are in washington right now mm. right so so that kind of you know that helped them spread even further and um and with, with the frankists they you know they they took on that uh, that uh, um that kind of secret persona deal but also you know vow of silence never to really divulge anything and um, so, yes, that's how they pretty much came came to power. And, you know, you, you see the modern iteration of of all of this through modern day Satanism, you know, the 
666 comes from the Kabbalistic, you know, uh, importance of the number six and 1666. I mean, you know, it's all related. So you can see that, that there, how that intertwines. And, you know, all of it really, it, it goes back to, if you read about ancient, even ancient cultures, it's like this importance of, uh, blood sacrifice and gaining power through blood. And, um, so that's, um, you know, that's where we get the whole satanic thing too. They, they're essentially, uh, sa- making these sacrifices and they're, they're drinking blood to, to get more because they believe it's powerful mm-hmm. and they're, you know, they, they're spilling blood to these dark forces in, in another realm. Um, to be able to manifest them into the physical, essentially. So that's what they believe from, you know, from ancient cultures up until modern day Satanism, that that's essentially what they're doing with the whole blood thing. It's a, you know, it's a, the concept of, of everlasting youth and, and sacrificing to their specific deities. Yeah, yeah no, thanks. Yeah. yeah, thanks. That's a great introduction to it all. And I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you actually did a bit of digging into the, the family trees of world leaders as well, they are all into sort of interconnected. And I think it kind of links back to Vlad the Impaler, isn't it? I think some of these, uh, some of the American presidents and stuff like that. Well, all, yeah. If you look at the genealogy of the American presidents, and I actually wanted to put that in the film, but I think I, I forgot. <laughs> we'll um, do it now. <laughs> yeah, I may, I may add it into. I'm I'm working on a new a new thing. If I ever finish it, but uh, mm. I, I'll probably put that in. All the presidents are related. Mm. Um, there was actually a little girl who discovered this. Um, she did the genealogy of all the U.S. presidents, and like all but one, I think, are essentially cousins of some kind. And they, you know, they go back to like King Richard the whatever it is. So it's all about ancient bloodlines, you know, um, and uh, yeah, it's very much a part. They've tried to kind of keep it in the family. From my research, too many uh, jigsaw puzzles are fitting into place with that. Like I had yeah. a policeman on who was, um, his name's John Wedger, and he was a, de- he's a, de- a detective and he basically uncovered a whole satanic ritual um, network in England and um he was like ousted for that and he was actually told to shut up or they'll kill him basically and then he started to talk to satanic ritual victims and even they were saying that you know they're possessed and they're from you know from a different realm um i and... i put those kids in my film or are those the ones he all oh, right uh, no he didn't i think he'll know i think he'll know of that but we actually mm. one of the episodes we brought on a, uh, a satanic ritual abuse victim on and um, she was actually trafficked from Africa and mm. she was brought over here and she was involved in sort of like, you know, sort of gangbang parties. And she was, you know, and she was, she became so possessed that um, she needed to go to see an exorcist, like to, to get an exorcism. Wow. And it's actually pretty deep. And she sort of talks about how, yeah, like, the, and, and John, John Wedger as well. They talk about the, the world leaders, the, the, the people in parliament, they all go to these VIP parties and, um, they have they have a certain system like they'll have a he even talked about the the levels of authority within the network so you have like the yeah. the people that find the kids and the kids are called diamonds on this that's like the term for, for kids and then yeah. they have the um the people that will fix it like they'll get the kids they'll and that's why you have jim jimmy savile in england he actually mm-hmm. had a show called jim will fix it so it's all kind of like the code yeah. words are coming out and um, and then you have like the international fixes, which are like your Gilean Maxwells and your Epstein's yeah. and stuff like that. And then he goes like the next level above that is the um, uh, I think it's the Bloods, and then you have like the royalty. So it's, it's so compartmentalized. Fast. I yeah. mean, it, it's very real. I mean, we know that satanic ritual abuse is real. Um, mm. And the way they portray these things in the media, though, it's it's easy to laugh at them. Even the reptilian thing, you know, I, I, I'll admit, you know, and I don't know if I'm a hundred percent on anything yet, but um, the way, you know, if you say like, oh yeah, well, there are lizard people shape-shifting. Mm. <laughs> if you say it that way, yeah, then, yeah it's going to mm. sound stupid. Yeah. But if you, 
if you really dig into it and you look at ancient cultures and you look at how they uh, worshipped snakes and serpents and, you know, all the various uh, iterations of reptile figures, and then, you, you know, you trace bloodlines and th there's something there's something there to, to look at. And that's that's my thing, too, is like I hate when people just shut things off into like, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. Well, no, there's history there. There's actual scientific fact. And if you look at it, instead of being a jackass, you, you might uncover something, you know? And then if you prove it, if you prove it to just be a wacky conspiracy theory, uh, theory then, then cool. You did your job. Yeah. You, you know, but just, but give it some time. Give it, give it a try. Exactly. Yeah, You've got to give, give it, it a try. You have to. That's the problem. People aren't willing to go yeah. there because it just sounds so far-fetched. But yeah. as, as Ike would said, if you've been living in a pea-sized bubble of perception your whole life anything that's slightly outside of that is going to sound completely not worth going yeah. towards. um but uh it would make sense to me because if you think about life that there is a food chain to the natural world um why wouldn't there be a food chain in the energetic world as well and we know from quantum i think string theory and quantum quantum theory um that this is you know this is sort of modern quantum theory is that multiple realities can exist in the same space yeah so why couldn't it be then that you have a food chain that works within that energetic world in so, you know the different dimensions that are all occurring in the same space that to me yeah. is a possibility that could exist and right. if that's the case what what could be trawling our energy what could be feeding off this level of reality and then then when you start to then go into the sort of reptilian stuff that would make a little bit more sense having prefaced that with the understanding if you just go in with like there's lizards, the shape-shifting lizards. <laughs> like you said, people yeah. are just going to laugh at that. But, um, right. I, I, you know, so I think if you if you come at it like that, I think there is definitely scope for, for, for that possibility. But can yeah. I also say, what, what do you think then, how does that connect to the Sabbatean Frankists? Would you say that they are, um, they are actually possessing that trans-dimensional entity, would you say? Or some of them are? Or would you reckon... Yeah, the idea is like the the thing with like the religious aspect is it it's sort of like it sort of covers up all the all of that in in the wrong way. Like I think religion is really just a form of of divide and conquer and uh it sort of absorbed a lot of the truth but coded it, you know? So when we talk about like Lucifer and um you know it's like the main point is that there is a dark force, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to call it. And I think the idea is that this force is a reptilian force. Um, and they, from ancient times, have, you know, sacrificed to this energetic force in another realm, in another dimension, whatever it is, in order to manifest um manifested into the physical um maybe taking it on in themselves um or you know have been rewarded by it in some way with you know riches and and mm -hmm. what have you that's you know that's in the literature um you can go back to the even the mayans and the aztecs you know they were freaking sacrificing thousands of people on their pyramids um to cuckoo clan the the great dragon god and and you know there was sun worship and a lot of, a lot of it also leads back to astro -the theology so i think that's that's where the truth really is you know it's there's there's something with the with the whole ast astro theological aspect of it and um and this this force in another in another realm outside of ours our, outside of our band of frequency yeah. you know yeah, yeah I, I, that's kind of where I'm at as well. I, I like what you said about the astro theology, because that's kind of where I'm at with um, religion. I think even when they talk about the sun, you know, like the um, the sun, our savior. Well, the yeah. sun, if it doesn't, if, if we don't get sunlight, then, you know, we're, we're not going to survive, are we? And then it, it that to me connects to a lot of the stories within uh, the Christian Bible in terms of the, the 12 apostles, the 12 zodiac signs, the sun moving across the sky yeah. and then it gets the the kiss of death when it goes into Scorpio and then it, when the sun rises again, it's like being resurrected. So it's, you know, it, it yes. dies. The, the sun goes into zero degrees latitude and longitude. And so it's on a cross and then it rises again in the sky. So of course it's resurrecting. So I actually think that 
I think a lot of that is just metaphor. Like you said, it's coded, it's codified within the Bible yeah. as metaphor, but I think people yes. read it as li- as literal. Um, I mean, I'm yeah. open to the, I'm actually open to the idea that it could be fractal. So it, it, it could be that you have the sun in the sky and there might be in, in a sort of as above, so below, there could be a human carnation, incarnation of the sun energy, the solar energy that could come mm-hmm. through in the human form as well. But I think, I don't know. I think most likely it, it is just referring to the sun when it talk about uh, Jesus. Yeah. I, that's how I feel about it. But again, I'm open to all of it. If, if people want to yeah. leave me down the way, I'm happy to, to go there. You know, it's possible, you know, we don't, we don't really know what, what I tend to believe though, is that w- why I'm not so in the whole Jesus camp is because, you know, those like ancient texts, like Sumerian texts precede the Bible, you know, yeah. when there were, there were figures just like Jesus and Mary and they, you know, they had the, with the virgin birth and the resurrection. And, mm. um, you know, Ike talks about it in his book. Uh, so there, it's kind of like the same parable regurgitated over and over again. So I'm not, you know, I'm not sure that that's anything more than just another parable, but, uh, mm. but we don't know, you know, we, we don't know how they really, intertwined all this stuff but i i do believe the bible is mostly encoded there's a lot of truth in the bible but it but it is encoded you know in metaphors and and all that yeah so yeah i mean you can see how that stuff was kind of absorbed into christianity you know with lucifer and lucifer is just venus you know the first star of the morning first light of the morning lucifer means light bearing light bringing um and you know if you go back to like the the aztecs they they even constructed their pyramids to face Venus because they tracked it. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of things you can read about that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Um, yeah, and going back to the uh, Sabatier and Frankie stuff and the potential link that has to maybe a trans-dimensional entity or something like that. I mean, yeah. do you think? Do you think that? But is is this in any way connected to Saturn and Saturn's ring, Saturn's energy? Um, yeah, Saturn is another thing, and I, I haven't I haven't dived too deep in, into that, but yeah, Saturn is a big one for them. Um, I know that I know that plays a big part, you know. Um, but uh, I don't know enough to speak on it. I know there's you know, cro- it, it, you know, you can read about Kronos who like ate his children, mm-hmm. and then Kronos was uh, essentially Saturn, right? Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of that stuff. But you know, the the main point is that if you believe in in this dark entity, be it you know mm. Lucifer or reptilians or whatever, um, I think all of these groups are essentially working for that goal because they all. I mean, you can look at their kind of mission statement and and see that they're they're trying to be gods. They want to take over the world, and they've infiltrated all the major industries you know education Mm. medicine everywhere since the beginning of time and it's um it does seem to me as though and you touched on earlier there's like a faustian bargain there where they will um give up their soul you can use another word for that i guess you you know just their integrity to in order to that they feel like there's a contractual agreement there where they'll give that up in return for some superficial elevation within society maybe you know higher positions of power more money just you know the superficial highs and by doing that they kind of you would say and you even in biblical terms they're selling their soul to the devil um and you even hear rappers sing about that i sold my soul to the devil i know it's a crappy deal lots of celebrities do that you have a lot of symbolism don't you in in uh the kind of in Hollywood music industry, stuff like that, where they're almost, they're signposting to a lot of this stuff, either through their lyrics, just how they dress and, you know, stuff they're doing, little, little code, code of things they're doing with their hands and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's quite, when you actually look at it, it scratch the surface, it's, it's rife. You can see it everywhere. And, um, and yeah, yeah, I think there's, there is some kind of, there is a, fa- there is a Faustian bargain going on. Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out. And so I sold my soul to the devil. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. And I, I kind of looked at this, and I was thinking this the other day, and I was going through all the things that, are, are for me, are intrinsic to the natural order. So you'd say, what do we know is true? What do we know is natural? So we go, okay, well, 
uh, sex is natural, uh, male and female is natural. Well, those are the things that are being completely inverted and turned upside down. Um, they're, but they're obsessed with it. If you know, the, obsessed. the triangles are male and female, you know, that's, that's their, their whole deal with the, with the triangles. Which, what do you mean right. the triangles? Like the, I believe the, the, you know, the regular triangle. Oh God, yeah. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <Clip up. laughs> Delete that. Yeah. Um, the, the regular triangle um, yeah. is like the male and the downward yes. pointing one is the female. Yeah. So that they, they, yeah, they're obsessed with kind of the, the masculine and the, and the feminine um, and that the, the process of like creation, I think. They want to, that for me, that is that satanic element, isn't it? It's, it's to yeah. convert creation itself it's like anti for want of a better expression god anti-life and yeah. they're doing it in so many different ways like you know let's think what else is connected to uh, the natural world life you'd say the sun trying to block the sun uh carbon dioxide it's like a natural plant food well that's evil isn't it you know like they're making <laughs> us they're making us hate the natural world and i think that is the that is that satanic inversion of life that, that i think is going on at the moment everything that we see that's actually the bedrock of the natural world is being completely uh, flipped, flipped around. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, they've, it seems to me they've permeated every, every major institution, even some of those, I mean, maybe, maybe the Knights of Templar were benign at one point, maybe they were the white hats, but that's been, you know, at some point that probably turned down the dark path. I don't know if you've got any research on that, but I'm sure some of these, some of these things might have been, uh, benevolent to begin with but then were corrupted and, and inverted and became malevolent um, but it does it does feel as though every major institution right now at the sort of the top level does have this dark force right well that's one thing people have to understand is that's that's very much the case with most of these if not all of the institutions like the freemasons for example you the low level freemasons have no idea what's going on they think they've you know uncovered some uh you know minor secrets of the universe or whatever but it's really the top rung that are you know are the luciferians and the you know they're really uh um the evil the evil kind of group within the group but you know i've uh i've interviewed a, a freemason and you know he was either <laughs> i don't know if he was uh, unaware or or you know a lot of them just lie uh, but a lot of them are kept in the dark unless they're believed to be worthy of the the real information, you know. So even the Jesuits have low, you know, low level um, priests who try to do good. They, they you yeah. know, so they're not they're not all bad, but that way they can kind of you know cover up the the real um, the mission of of that group of what they're doing at the highest level because yeah. i think at very yeah. low levels like such things like the freemasons i think people go along to that just thinking it's like a kind of a glorified networking group and you've even got websites yeah. for like illuminati you can actually find this like there's actually a website <laughs> for the illuminati yeah. and you can see people have joined it and the way they they sell it actually sounds pretty reasonable you know they talk about you know believing in life and wanting to do better for the world and stuff like that so on that kind of entry level it kind of I guess brings a lot of people in and I don't think they're quite privy to the, the information as you say at the top level but that's how they yeah. kind of draw people in and then they kind of go up the chain but at that very highest echelons of these sort of groups I'm sure it is absolutely well it, it is it's absolutely toxic yeah um, yeah even even satanism you know the satanists are yeah. pretty much the low level plebs and they'll probably get run over at the end you know, they're there to do the bidding of really the higher ups and at, you know, at the top, top of the pyramid is really that dark entity, the, those dark forces, and they're using all of these little puppets, you know, mm -hmm. so that that's, it's funny when people think politicians are, you know, mm -hmm. the, the ultimate evil, they're, they're puppets, they're, they're all just puppets. puppets. Yeah. I was going to say they work, they're car that, compartmentalized. Well, that's, that's how they work in terms of also, as you mentioned, the I think you said that, uh, what was his name, Jevy, he, he, he cowered behind uh, Juda Judaism, didn't he? Is that not right? Yeah, he, yeah, he took on Judaism, even though he didn't care about it, you know, um, yeah, they just, just to infiltrate and, and um, promulgate their, their real goals, yeah. And I think we see that with some of these billionaire philanthropists that we see, they cower behind seemingly virtuous and um, noble causes, especially around the ideas of saving humanity, saving the planet. 
but again it's that trojan it's a trojan horse that's what it is it's that and it, and it works so cleverly because who's going to argue about a, a mission that's that's there to sort of save humanity and save the earth i mean it's hard to if you question that you get called all sorts of things so it's actually the perfect storm isn't it i mean you 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 you, you have a you have an idea of what you want to uh, create in, in order to destroy but you wrap it with um these uh these green movements as well um and also to yeah. vac- vaccinate the, the entire planet to keep us all safe i mean it's yeah it, i don't think people are quite, i think what it is is people aren't ready for that kind of level of to 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 acknowledge that level of evil in the world so that people would right. much prefer to be incubated they'd like to fire all that off uh, but we've <clears> yeah. kind of gone do you know what i just think the truth just stands no boundaries i need to know and we've opened ourselves to it but i think a lot of people won't even go there and i think that's the difference they won't yeah they won't and i meet them every day and it's infuriating to me because i i just can't think that way but uh you know of course they always veil things in um you know this this supposed want to help you know yeah. um and of course that's uh, complete and utter bullshit but but people will believe that because it's it's comfortable. It's comfortable to stay in that little box where the government wants to help you and vaccines save lives. And mm-hmm. we're all in this together, you know, but really, you know, I, I, I tried to spread the truth about uh, viruses. And I don't believe viruses exist because they, they don't. That's what the scientific proof says. And people refuse. Oh, man, you can't talk about that. No. It's become religious. It's it's become, it's almost like um, faith for them. Yeah. They want to believe in these tiny particles that will attack them. It's like they get off on it or something. I really don't understand. It's like when I discovered this, I, you know, I believed in germ theory my whole life. It was a weight off my shoulders, you know? Oh, I don't have to worry about like, you know, STDs and all, you know, all these tiny Mm. little particles and attacking you. It's nonsense. It's not how our bodies work. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can't you can't catch health. So why do we think we're going to catch you know, <laughs> yeah. like um, yeah. viruses? I mean, that's a that was a big eye opener. And I in a, in a way, it was good uh, the last two years because I probably wouldn't e- wouldn't have even investigated that. So it's been yeah. a big the, the last two years. If you want to call it a spiritual level or just a kind of a higher awareness, I think this was a kind of um, uh, it's almost like um, an initiation in <laughs> process because I do think that it, that there was a big wave of um, awareness that came to a lot of people because of what was going on in the world i definitely had that you know like things you know 9 11 that woke a lot of people up i think the last two years had a big wake-up effect on those that are ready to accept that's where i started pretty much yeah yeah and um you know i wouldn't have even looked into the whole i would have just believed the contagion theory as well but it does seem to me as though that is another one of those historic lies that we were taught because it benefits so many so many people why wouldn't we be taught that and 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 learn that propagate that it all Um, came from the institutions built by the groups that we're talking about and you know (laughs) and people have come to trust them but that's that's the problem you know they're funded they're funded by the people who benefit and you know it's just when you look at it it's it's pure logic you know there's no there's no um independent variable in virology you have no x therefore there cannot be y and these people who argue with me about it it's like i'm just like show me x yeah show me x show me the science they can't answer because they're trapped in this like ridiculous ideology of nonsense yeah and you cut to them you can't even discuss it it's like it's it's um it's an axiom that they won't even um uh look over again I mean, if yeah. you, um, I had Dr. Uh, Tom Cowan, he might be a good one for your show as well. Um, he wrote, Oh, he was supposed to be on my show, but he stopped responding to me. Oh no. Okay. Maybe <laughs> I'll message him. You <laughs> could share. Do you, are you, us. do you have him coming on your show? I've had him already. Yeah. I'm, I'm so pissed off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe we could like share guests between us and like create. A he literally a ghosted me, bro. Oh, I don't no, know why. But, oh, that's worse than a girl. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's he's one of the best and Cal, you've had Kaufman on I think they're both really good at yes um ex- explaining the difference between terrain theory and, and germ theory and he you know if people want to look into this actually have a look to see has SARS-CoV-2 been isolated and they'll always put they'll always point to what's known as culturing which is when you mix the sample <laughs> yeah. with um loads of Would other you say mix 
you say mix yeah they mix it don't they yeah <laughs> that's that that doesn't that's the sound opposite. Like isolation yeah exactly it's the opposite of isolation <laughs> but if people want to look into it it doesn't actually um uh, fit, uh i think it's called cox postulates it doesn't actually um meet the requirements for that but again it's one of those things where they'll they'll have so much cognitive dissonance with that and they'll throw you back all kind of articles saying it does but if you actually yeah. look into it and just use a bit of common sense then you'll see that actually this this thing has never actually been isolated therefore that is not yeah. what's making people ill well because the authority told them that isolation now means mixing things so that's yeah. so that's they're just going to take that and run with it but the funny thing is it's like well how did you validate that the virus was in the sample that you put in the culture to begin with? Hmm. You didn't, you never validated it. So how do you know there's a virus in there? Where did you first categorize and, and, you know, ca uh, characterize the, the, the virus, you know, where is it there? It's not there. <laughs> you, know, you can't yeah. just create a culture with no independent variable. So the culture thing doesn't even really matter at the end of the day. But it, but it just proves, you know, if, if we're going to, we can even play their game and, and, you know, prove it wrong because Stefan Lanka did control yeah. experiments and they get the same effect that proves viruses without, without a, a clinical sample. So how mm. does that work? Yeah. Stefan Lanka is a good one because he actually won yeah. the court case, uh, but you won't see uh, proving that measles doesn't actually exist. If you go right. online, you go into Google and you just type in Stefan Lanka court case. They'll only show you the articles where he actually um, lost the very first court case. Yeah, he appealed. Before, yeah, and then he appealed and he won the the, the Supreme Court case. Um, right. But they, you will never find that on Google because that's, and then that should give you, you should ask yourself, why is that? And then by going down that line of inquiry, you should sort of, should, should sort of shake you up, wake you up a little bit. Um, but can I ask, what do you think is actually, I might have to cut some of this out for the, uh, for YouTube, but um what do you think is causing the, let's say, the disease? Because people get confused with viruses and disease. What do you think is causing the, the body's reaction to what's going on at the moment? Because people are getting ill. There's no doubt in the last two years, people, I mean, I've been ill and stuff, but what would you say is actually causing that? Because you've also well, had people, Arthur Furstenberg on as well. I'm just interested yeah. to know where you, where you sit with a lot of the information. Well, firstly, people have always been ill. So that's nothing new, you know, and we, we respond, there's always different toxins and we have different kinds of sickness. So we'd have, you know, different kinds of the flu every year. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, the numbers of the flu and, and heart disease and all the things that have existed uh, far before COVID, um, they just switched them around. They just kind of transplanted them. When you put them back in, it's just the yearly mm. flu numbers, the, you know, deaths from diabetes, all that stuff. So there was nothing really new, except um, they, yeah, they did implement 5G towers, which was a new frequency. Um, and I believe, you know, I, I don't know how much that played a part. My notion is that it may have, um, it may have created some, some flu-like symptoms or breathing issues at the very beginning you know, that kind of like led people to the hospital. Um, and then from there, the hospital took over with their protocols because they're all, you know, enlisted these protocols that they were to follow uh, along with the fake tests. So they test somebody positive, they put them on a ventilator, which is a, you know, a ventilator is a, ha a Hail Mary. You shouldn't put anybody on a ventilator unless they're mechanically unable to breathe. Right. But they were putting them in, you know, people came in with anxiety or whatever, and they put them on a ventilator and ventilators kill nine out of 10 people. You can search that. Um, and they gave them toxic new drugs like remdesivir, which, you know, flood your body, you know, kill your your kidneys and flood your body full of, uh, you know, you, you, you drown in your own liquids. Um, so things like that were happening. So there's no there's nothing really new. Um, I think, I think that, you know, implementing a new frequency around the world maybe contributed to, to some of that, um, you know, maybe symptoms, but, you know, I, I totally believe EMF is real. Radiation is real. Absolutely. But, uh, I'm not convinced that it, that it played like a huge role in every single thing. I think it was, I think it was a, a layer of it. You know what I mean? But I, I don't think they would do what they did with the cases and the PCR tests, you know, the case demic, 
um, if there was really something that was affecting people that much, you know, they, they made great effort to, um, to create these cases, you know, not actual clinical, uh, you know, hospitalizations or deaths or anything, just cases. It's the same thing they did for like, you know, HIV and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think, and, and a huge part of this is psycho mass psychogenic illness, you know, no, no question. People were pumped full of fear from the very beginning. I mean, if you remember March, 2020, you know, for, for two years, you know, two, nothing but fear, the virus is going to get you, uh, you know, stay home, stay safe, stand six feet apart. When you put that kind of fear into people, they're going to be counting the seconds until they get this new thing, right? And your mind is going to then inform your body to, you know, hey, look out for this new thing. You know, we're, we're under attack. So you're going to inform every cell in your body to start taking away resources to prepare for this new thing. Mm. And of course, you're going to psych yourself into, into sickness, that's very real. Even in the in mainstream literature, you can read about the nocebo placebo effect. You know, they've done surgeries on people where, or like fake surgeries on people where they believe they got better, oh. you know, but they never really did anything. Um, so the mind plays a, a huge role in all of this, what people believe. And I talk about a lot on my show how I, you know, when I stopped believing in germ theory, when I stopped believing in the concept of of submicroscopic particles attacking me, I haven't been sick in almost three years. And I'm a person who would always get sick at least once a year. I mean, before COVID, I was like, all, I was getting sick all over the place. And, and my other friends say the same thing. You know, once you um, discard this kind of like, this idea of a, of a, a realm where you live to fear, small particles, you, you're just healthier. And I can't explain that fully, but, uh, but there's something to it. And I think, so I think that happened um, in the opposite way for people. Even but, like the losing the taste and smell, what would you say put that down to? Because people were getting that as a symptom, weren't they? Yeah, well, you know, first thing I ask people is, were you wearing a mask? Were you getting rods shoved up your nose? Um, you know, you were, you're breathe, first of all, you're inhaling your own carbon dioxide. I did a video on how carbon dioxide can cause anosmia and parosmia, uh, inhaling microplastics can cause issues. You know, you're jamming a rod with God knows what on it. Um, you know, other chemicals up into your sensitive area of your sinuses. Um, so <laughs> that could be it. Um, but certainly, yeah, like, you know, 5G radiation or radiation sickness uh, poisoning um, could account for that as well. You could lose your taste and smell. Mm. Um, but there's so, you know, there's so many things, I think, uh, that we really have to we really have to look into it more to, to see exactly what, what happened. But one thing I do know is that there was nothing. There was no new virus, mm. you know? Yeah. And again, it's one of those where people just they wouldn't even be able to comprehend what we're saying here because yeah. they're so, they've been so programmed into the, into the current narrative that, I mean, and, and it's been so long as well that to even mention this is just too, just too mind, mind altering for them. Yeah. And then it would also mean once this domino falls, then the other dominoes might fall. And then it's like questioning their whole worldview. And I think that's yeah. also, there's also another firewall there. There's, there's something else that comes in there where they prevent the first domino from falling. So you, you actually see this when you talk to people, even people that you consider to be quite, I don't know, scientific reason people. As you start talking about this stuff, I, I get I have this thing where as I'm talking, to them, I can actually feel as though they're immediately trying to block it um, as I'm talking to them, because I, I get the feeling yeah. as though if that domino, if, if they let that one thing in, then it will have a ripple effect. And it's yeah. like they go, actually, do you know what? I'll just call you a name. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> in order to believe that you've been lie you know lied to that this entire worldview is wrong you almost have to believe in conspiracies you almost have to believe that there is evil on the planet mm. for that to be true and people don't want to go there yeah that's what it is 
well we're, we're trying to do we're trying to do the opposite which is to go there <laughs> you know, with, yeah. with what we're doing and stuff um patrick what are your you know what who else have you got coming on um anything else you want to talk about in terms of your vision with the podcast um i'm still figuring it out as i go along honestly um yeah it's whatever i kind of feel like in the moment right now i'm kind of between episodes i just did an episode on more of the virus thing and more related to contagion and uh we had a good talk about that um so i just kind of look around and see what you know what people really need to maybe hear about and uh, what I'm interested in, you know, and, and sometimes outside of health too. I like talking about other, other things. So I might, I might go a little bit outside of that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, right now I'm still kind of figuring out my next episodes. Hopefully it'll be something good. And maybe Tom Cowan will come on. I don't know, <laughs> Tom. Where I mean, you? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't get Tom, you've actually, Patrick, for anyone that's watching, um, Patrick's got his podcast called A Light On, and uh, you've actually had some, yeah, some real big guests on. I'm, I don't know how you've done it, but obviously, you know, you got away with words. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you've had, um, and you've also had Amanda on, who I, um, who I'm trying to get on as well. Amanda um, Volmer, yeah. Volmer, who's excellent as well. Um, Kaufman, Ike. I mean, yeah, it's this really, really good stuff, man. Really, really good stuff. And of course, I want to tell people to um, check you out. Check on A Light On podcast. You're on Odyssey. You're on BitChute um yes. and if if and Spotify, when you apple and if youtube are willing <laughs> willing and you're on there occasionally i stopped i i i'll put little kind of bumper uh, little clips on on youtube uh, but i stopped using them because they'll, they're just gonna strike me and then delete yeah. my channel so yeah that's that's kind of what happened to me as well you know you get the one then the two and you're like oh i might have to leave, leave it a couple months and then it, it does kill the motivation a little bit to use youtube when you know there's just whatever you do, how much hard work you put in, they'll just, you know, if, yeah. they want to, if they want us to pull the rug, they'll just pull the rug. And people need to, you know, they need to spend more time on free platforms. You know what I mean? Like give them your, your yeah. attention, use them. Uh, we can't keep using YouTube and all these big tech, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, Odyssey, I really like Odyssey actually. I think it's a really yeah. good concept. It's, it's completely open to anything. And um, it also rewards people with crypto, a crypto coin. So if you watch videos, if you publish <laughs> videos, then it's not much, but it's just at least there's some kind of incentive there. Um, I'm not and, a fan of crypto, but uh, yeah, I guess it's something. <laughs> oh, really? Maybe that's another for another discussion then the whole crypto um, scene as well. well. If you want to go in, yeah, digital currency. I mean, that's yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's um, maybe we maybe I can get you back on in a few weeks and we can yeah, talk sure. about crypto or something like that. Um, <laughs> sure. But uh, Patrick, all right, Patrick, do you want to just uh, mention again the how can they find you then? I mean, I've mentioned the name of the podcast, but is there a specific URL or anything? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm on, uh, like I said, uh, Spotify and Apple. You can find me a light on podcast, um, bitshoot.com slash a light on. And uh, I'm sure you can search me on Odyssey and find me. I'm everywhere. Um, and I'm also on Instagram, a light on podcast, uh, where I do some live streams here and there. And, um, you know, I'm, I post my little clips and you can keep, uh, keep in touch. 